You're jacked in to Buffy's Angels. Uh, we've got two big episodes today to to talk through. One of Buffy, one of Angel. That tends to be how we do it on the show, at least for the past 14 weeks. Um, this uh, Buffy episode is called Goodbye, Iowa. Logan watched it, still doesn't know what the title means. That's understandable. Um, and the Angel episode this week is called I've Got You Under My Skin. That might remind you of that time Jenny Callender said that when she was possessed by the demon Igon in oh season two, God. episode eight of Buffy. But uh, she's not in this episode. All right. A different demon is. Um, so big stuff coming up this week on the show. It, it was a very big week in terms of pop culture as well. And we'll talk it through. Uh, but let me bring in my co-host watching the shows for the first time ever uh and i hope he uh if not enjoyed these very dense episodes uh at least uh was intrigued by them and is ready to discuss logan be a dare what's up yeah i would say i was i would say i was intrigued by them more than i liked them maybe that might be the a good way to put it but the goodbye iowa thing is it like is it like Riley's sort of saying goodbye to like the nice, obedient Riley, and now he's his own person. Like goodbye, Iowa. Goodbye to that that good guy, Riley. Now I'm yeah my own Riley. Logan, so you started off by saying I still don't understand the title. Meanwhile, perfect examination of the title. Okay, well, a lot of the episodes they really like they'll tell you exactly what it is sometimes, but not no, it's one. true. The, uh, Goodbye, Iowa was a far cry from Inca Mummy Girl, but uh, <laughs> but you know, whatever you 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 got through it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. And uh, yeah, the the Angel episode is interesting. I I don't don't know if I liked it, but I think it was an interesting blending of two sort of genres yeah. or two I, sort of things there the one thing i'll say right off the bat about this angel episode is you know around this time i was way more into buffy than i was angel like i didn't get heavy into angel until like late season two early season three and i would like think about season one like what a weird season it's all these standalone episodes like randomly like the the quality is so up and down and i i will say that like this episode didn't make too much of an impression when it aired but i remember like thinking back on season one it was like one of the only individual episodes that i could like recall that's interesting i i can understand that but we don't get any real character stuff in this episode at all it's all just like we came up no. with a cool idea yeah for yeah what this episode totally could be. i think I, it's a good monster of the week ep episode idea absolutely and um and that's what we're there for the, the there is some good character stuff i like the the wesley stuff in this episode quite a bit and and angel accidentally calling him doyle yeah that was okay that was, i don't know but what about the stuff? Well, we'll get into it. But the stuff with like Wesley's, like the demon sort of yeah, his dad, his relationship with Angel, his father, like shit. yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I guess we can get into that. Yeah. Well, I'll say I think it's interesting for sure. Okay, I agree. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> All right, but first, let's talk about um, uh, goodbye Iowa. But even before we do that, let me tell you what was going on this week. So much, so yeah. much happening. All right. I don't even know where I should start. Number one movie wrestling. in America. Okay. Uh, no, there, it was a pretty light wrestling week. I don't have any wrestling stuff. Okay. Um, uh, the number one movie in America is still Scream 3. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Probably will be for at least a few weeks. Maybe. Uh, everyone thought it was going to get supplanted by the beach, but the beach came in at number two. Everyone was like, do people want to see Leo? I feel like people were really confused about Leonardo DiCaprio around this time because Titanic had made a shit ton of money and then they kept putting him in movies that he started and they weren't making money. And it wasn't really until Scorsese started making those movies that yeah. he became like a huge movie star. And I got to say, in hindsight, maybe maybe no one cares. Like, I understand Leonardo DiCaprio is like a huge star, but he ha has he ever like drawn an audience to a movie just like by himself i think 
definitely not. Yeah. Right. It's always yeah, like yeah. A, a massive epic by James Cameron or Scorsese that makes the box off. Like Wolf of Wall Street, The Aviator. Those were like huge hits. But like he, he's got a lot working for him. But that's what the movie like... stars do is they work with the best directors. I don't think I don't know if that's his fault necessarily that he hasn't worked with like a lame director and carried the movie only on his name. I think the biggest movie stars do that, you know, like there's a period of time like you, Tom Cruise could work with any piece of shit and it would make money because he's Tom Cruise. Leo never was that. But they're very different actors. Leo, Leo doesn't do any action stuff. I'm sure if Tom Cruise only focused on winning Oscars all the time, he would do the same thing. Okay, so who's Leo trying to emulate? Al Pacino, Robert De Niro? It's the same thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, though. I don't know if people... I mean, people do care about Leo, I guess. People care about him. I think he's certainly a big celebrity. But I don't think he's ever been a box office draw. I think, like, even today, if you threw him in something like the Equalizer, it would tank. That would actually... I would actually be interested in that. I would, too, but... I don't think it would make money. I I don't think so either. I never thought about that. Yeah. Anyway, that's my feelings on him. So the beach was at number two. Number three, Snow Day, which we covered on We Love Kids movies. You can check that out. And number four, the Tigger movie. And I never realized this, but uh, it made me a little uncomfortable writing down the word Tigger. Really? Yeah. Felt a little too close to a different word. (laughs) Um, Trigger, you're talking about. Trigger, yeah, yeah, the Trigger movie. What? Why would any <laughs> kids see that? The trigger movie. Yeah. Um. All right, the number one song in America, "Thank God I Found You" by Mariah Carey, featuring Ninety Eight Degrees. I didn't remember it. Went to go listen to it before the episode. Did I do remember it? It's so fucking boring. Really, you're a yeah. fan of Mariah Carey. I feel like I love Mariah Carey. I got no beef with Ninety Eight Degrees, like some of their hits. You know, I do cherish you featuring Screech in the music video. Um, What's he doing in the music video? The music video is like a lady on her wedding day, right? Preparing for her wedding is this big epic thing. And the punchline at the end of the video is she gets up to the altar and the dude she's marrying is Screech. Why is it funny? Because who would marry Screech, right? No, I get I get why we would find that funny. But why are they going for comedy? Is it like a funny song? No, it's a very serious, emotional song, but all of the videos, serious, emotional, and then at the end, it's like funny screech. Okay. L- listen, back at this time, like boy bands had to be a little funny. You you're know? right. You can't take yourself too too. You can't take yourself too seriously if you're in a boy band, probably. Yeah, you needed like, uh, you know, Chris Kirkpatrick to be in in sync, cracking wise. <laughs> you can get your ass kicked, right? That was his whole thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> a great rhyme by Eminem, second only to, I guess that's why they call it Window Pain. Coffee Pot, probably not. I think he did that. At what is point. that? I don't remember. I think, that. He, I think he rhymed Coffee Pot with probably not. <laughs> I sort of like that. <laughs> um, uh, b- some sad deaths this week. Okay. All right. Charles Schultz died right before the airing of this episode. The creator of Peanuts. Wow. He was still doing the Peanuts cartoon daily, Logan. I remember like he died the next day. Final Peanuts ever aired. He the did them like two days before they came out. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. He's like like the South Park of, yeah. of uh, art cartoonists or whatever. Yeah. Sad stuff from uh, from old Charles Schultz there. Goodbye, but I remember, Charles Schultz. I remember ex- being excited to read that in the paper. I'd never read like the series finale of a comic strip before, <laughs> and he you had no I idea, mean? probably, or did he? Did he hint that his no, death no, it didn't. It didn't wrap it up. How did he die? Did he? He didn't know it was coming. That's a good question. I actually have no idea how Charles Schultz died. Like, if you told me right now, he was like murdered. I believe you. I guess. <laughs> I hope he wasn't murdered. I hope he wasn't either. I I lost my phone. Oh, I found it. All right, I'm a. You want to find out? Yeah. Well, honestly, Charles when he, Schultz... when he, 
I, I've been thinking about death a lot kind of recently. And it's well, kind of <laughs> maybe because we're doing the final destination things, but it is kind of crazy how every person dies in the, in one way. You know, and that's just the way you die. And sometimes yeah. that's kind of the way you're remembered. It's just the way you die. No, not really, but kind of. It's kind of crazy. I don't know. <laughs> um. All right. He uh he had colorectal cancer. That sounds awful. That's butthole cancer. And he died in his sleep of a heart attack at 7. 77. It's not even that old. No, it's not that old. My grandparents are older than that. Yeah. God damn. Poor Charles Schultz. That guy ruled. All right. Other big death this week. Screaming Jay Hawkins. No clue. Well, come on. You ever hear that song? I put a spell on you. Sure. Yeah, that's him. Okay. That's really what he's known for. All right. All right. Sad to see Screaming Jay go. I'm sure they played I Put a Spell on You in tribute everywhere. They should have done and in this then, Buffy episode during the Tara and Willow segment. I put a spell on you. <laughs> Maybe we should close with it. It's fucking better than that Mariah Carey at 98 Degrees we bullshit. Can do that. So boring. Um, Sports. Big sports week. Oh, okay. All right. The NBA All-Star game happened. Awesome. All right, the the West beat the East 137 to 126. Uh, no surprise when you look at who the coaches were for each team. I guess uh, Tim Duncan, MVP of the All-Star game. Co-MVP. Okay, who else? Kobe. Close. Shaq. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Tim Duncan and Shaq. That's Shaq. impossible to beat. They- There's no reason. They- There's no... Um- no reason those guys won. Well, they tied for the lead, even though Allen Iverson was the top scorer in the game. Of and I read that because Tim Duncan already had a, a a championship ring, Shaq went up to him after the game and was like, I'm taking this trophy. You got a ring. <laughs> wow. Soon Shaq would have many rings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they go on to win the next three after this. Yeah, year. yeah. Um. By the way, the best All Star game I think is I believe it's two thousand one, and I think Allen Iverson is the MVP of that game. Uh, if you want we'll to talk a great about All-Star it, game, in season five of Buffy. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, you want to know who the coaches were? I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, who do you got? Phil Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, coach in the West and coach of the East. Knicks coach Jeff Van Gundy. Wow, Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah. I believe there's a story about Jeff Van Gundy where he he got so drunk once that he drove through his garage. <laughs> like <laughs> like he he thought it was open. He just drove right on in there. <laughs> he was like, I'm That's coming good. in. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Jeff. Oh, always liked that guy. I was a big Knicks fan at the time. He was just sort of there. He was just always like that tiny guy on the bed she'd see behind Pat Riley. And then all of a sudden we lost Pat. And uh, <laughs> it was like, I guess we're hiring that guy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think Stan Van Gundy is his brother. Really? I, There's I think a Van they... Gundy legacy in the NBA. Maybe I made up that they're brothers, but I always uh, I always thought they were brothers. Stan Van Gundy. I think I'm right. Van Gundy is a funny last name regardless. Yeah. All right. And the Espies. You familiar with the Espies? Sure. Yeah. All right, that's the sports awards show. Yeah, well, probably. that happened. That happened, and not only were they acknowledging sports from 1999, Logan, but since it was the 2000 ESPYS, we gave decade awards for each sport, best athlete of the decade for each sport, and I wrote them all I'm gonna guess. down, Logan. You can add you. I'll first. I'll tell you the non the decade awards that I enjoyed. First, did I say it was hosted by Jimmy Smith? No. Okay, but, Jimmy Smith from NYPD Blue and later West Wing. He hosted it. Um, I just want to start off. Let's give out the um, courage, sport courage and sports award. Logan, who do you think won that? For for what is this like? Any sport ever? Any any sport in nineteen ninety nine? Who had the most courage? I would say, Akeem Olajuwon had the most courage. 
No, it's the coach of the Columbine High School sports teams. And, uh, you know, he saved lives that year. Okay. I'd say he All probably right. deserves it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, comeback of the year. Let's let's shout out to the athlete who won comeback of the year. All right. Lance Armstrong. All right. Came, wow. came back, won the Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, but uh, let's uh, how about who won the best athlete of the '90s in each sport? Let's hear. It. Let's. I I think you could get all of them. There's no way I could, I could probably only get. I've got hockey, Michael Jordan, football, hockey, football, basketball, baseball, tennis, boxing, and golf. Let's hear your answers for all of them. You no, got basketball no already, Michael Jordan. I literally have zero idea. Uh, Emmett Smith was he in the was he a guy in the nineties? You're close. You're close. The winner was Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice. Okay, yeah. yeah, um, that's really all I could get. I couldn't name a basket or a baseball player from you the. You could 90s. name one baseball player from the nineties. No, I just embarrassed myself. Naming, How about like, the winner, Mark McGuire? Okay, yeah, I've heard of him. I would I would have guessed he played way older than the nineties though. Oh, my God. I thought he was like the 70s. He was bigger in the 2000s. I didn't know. I don't. I thought thought like Albert Pujols was the biggest guy in the 2000s. All right. What about (laughs) hockey? Who's the biggest hockey? Got to be Wayne Gretzky. That would be the 80s. He's the Wayne Gretzky of hockey, I would say. Um, They gave it to Mario Lemieux. Okay. Super Mario. Yeah. Um, How about uh, tennis? That's got to go Serena Williams. It, well, it's a dude. Oh, of, course of course it's a dude. They're all dudes. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's Pete Sampras. Oh. The great Pete Sampras. Best boxer of the 90s. They went with Evander Holyfield. R.I.P. to his ear. He's and, the guy. Uh, he got his ear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, the best uh, tennis player—I I mean, golfer, of course—Tiger uh, Woods. Oh, really? I would not. Yeah. I thought he came in the two thousands. No, no, already tearing it up in the late nineties. Um, <laughs> tearing it up. <laughs> what did you think I meant, pussy? That is what I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I meant I meant the greens, <laughs> but I suppose that as well. Um. And the uh, big album released this week, The Cure with Blood Flowers. What an album. It was oh. the capper to a trilogy of albums, of interconnected albums that they had begun in the early 80s, starting with uh, 1984's Pornography, con- uh, continuing with 87 or 88's Disintegration, and now Blood Flowers. And then after this, they went on a tour, and they were... Uh, perform all three albums in their entireties. It was called the Cure Trilogy. Their own eras tour, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a DVD of it, and I used to fall asleep to it roughly 75% of nights when I was a drunk. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. That is a I would lot put of it nights. on all the time. That is wild. So that's very significant to you, the Cure. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there was a period of time when I was drinking really hard where every night, I would fall asleep to either the Cure Trilogy DVD, School of Rock, <laughs> or um, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog to bring us back to Joss Whedon. I don't even know what that is. That was um, an internet musical that he did around the time of the writer's strike. He like self-produced it with like his friends, and uh, and it was great. It's one of the best things he ever did. And and Henry would just fall asleep to Million Dollar Baby. And yeah, while no no no. While I was watching that and the, the, literally this was at the same time. In the other room, Henry was falling asleep to Cinderella Man. Oh, are you serious? I literally went out of my way to correct myself. I I always thought it was Cinderella Man, but it, but I got it wrong. I I always confuse those. No, two. it's Which it's Cinderella Henry? Man. Oh, damn it. I, I thought I mixed them up in my brain, so I went the opposite of what I thought, but I was wrong. Well, I guess I was right, which then made me wrong. But okay, <laughs> that, that's cool. That's fun. All right, Logan's brain exploded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And uh, I, I just want to bring up, lastly, something that aired opposite this episode. 
uh, excuse me this episode but you, but buffy, you watched this episode right of course i watched buffy and angel this night okay but so what did you miss out on i missed out on a huge cultural happening a little fox special two hour special called who wants to marry a multi-millionaire wow do you remember this no okay this this is early disgusting reality TV, okay? Like, reality TV is first starting to happen. Survivor hadn't even premiered yet, okay? But, like, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was, like, tearing up the charts and shit. And, uh, and beauty pageants were doing well. So we decided to cross those two ideas. It's a beauty pageant, and the winner of the beauty pageant gets to marry a multimillionaire. And at the end of the show, the two hour special, they held the wedding ceremony. So, but the, the millionaire didn't have a say in who won. No, no, he, he picked the winner. Oh, oh, okay. I thought that just the winner got to marry this guy. Okay. But he chose who it was. He chose who it was. And then the winner of the pageant married him at the end of the episode. Now, this was unfortunately, one <laughs> this is it was meant to be a series of specials, okay? But for the first ever multimillionaire, they got a guy by the name of Rick Rockwell, okay? Okay. And it turned out that he technically had two million dollars in the bank. That is multi millions. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't really rich. He didn't have access to all of it. And he was kind of a struggling stand-up comic. (laughs) And, um, like, they went around to, like, photograph his home. And that he had a, um, like, an old toilet in his backyard. And people were like, how can he be a multimillionaire with an old toilet in his backyard? Good point. Yeah. But he was the guy they picked. And then they also found out, Logan, that in the early 90s, a woman had taken out a restraining order against him. Okay, this is this is more where I thought we were going. I thought you were going to say he murdered somebody or he no no was canceled it, it's just, or the something. show was who wants to be a marry a multimillionaire. It turned out he, he was, was a fraud, neither of. a multimillionaire or an nor eligible a bachelor. Really. Person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, so he chose this woman, Darva Conger, and um, and then it turned they like annulled the marriage like two months later and both of them spent the next year appearing on whatever talk show they could talking shit about the other one yeah so who do you think came out on top neither of them came out on top it was it was a horrible situation for all involved wow (laughs) but But it was uh, just one episode basically yeah and it was a huge hit they wanted to make more but there was like so much controversy with the first one that they were just like cut bait on the whole idea that sucks that's horrible yeah yeah, they should resurrect it now, like make it a little more palatable, Honestly. like they did with uh, Joe Millionaire. Yeah, they should do that. They let like one bad apple spoil the TV show. Yeah, fucking Rick Rockwell destroyed a whole franchise for that's him. Ho- that's horrible. Yeah. Um, but it was like, what? What are Fox's like background people doing? Like, there's an actual restraining order. How'd they miss that? It yeah. turned out that Rick Rockwell wasn't even his real name, and they didn't know that. Like, how do you? What did you do a background check at all? That is crazy. Like today, people ask that question. Like, how do you let the guy who said the N word one week into Big Brother? How does that guy get on the show? But this guy, like, it wasn't even like the right name or anything. Like, everything was wrong about him. Yeah, it's it's one thing like casting someone who like turns out to be a bad guy, and like you go back, like they said something shitty on social media like twenty years ago. But like. But they should be checking that stuff. This also. was like legal documentation that this person isn't who he says he is. Yeah, that's crazy, actually. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that aired opposite uh, these episodes. So let's get into Goodbye Iowa straight up. Um, but did you go to school the next day and you guys you were like, guys, did you guys watch Buffy? And they were like, no, we were watching this other thing. You don't know about Rick Rockwell? What's no, happened, I was man? very aware of Rick Rockwell. Like I was I, I was. Uh, I read a lot about the show. I just wasn't interested in watching it. I don't remember there being a biz- big buzz about it in school, though. I think more like older people watched it. Yeah, I imagine. I do yeah. remember like later in that school year when Survivor premiered, school was still happening and a lot of people were talking about that. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Sue Hawk, she seems really funny. 
No, it was just like they, it wasn't even that. Like no one was talking individual people. It literally was like they're all on an island. Like they don't have food. <laughs> yeah. I imagine that was really cool at the time. Yeah. It was exciting. Um all right. So goodbye, Iowa airs February 15th, 2000, one day after Valentine's Day, aka the birthday of Connor Roberts from Bright Eyes. And I know that birthday, and I once won a contest at Bonnaroo uh by knowing that birthday and i got a t-shirt or something well that's very cool all right you said this was the day after that no this is that day february oh, it's, 15th. It's, it's his birthday okay. it's the day after valentine's day okay okay i'm sorry yeah connor robert always said he was a day late for love <laughs> that's, <sad. laughs> that's true uh marty Knoxon is the writer of this episode uh she's you know, she was around constantly in seasons two and three. She's a little less prolific this season. I think we heard her recently. Oh, yeah, no, didn't she be- do a movie? We talked about like a... Oh, she did Fright Night. She we talked about Fright Night recently. Yeah, yeah. We talked about her recently on this show because she was part of Doomed, which was the one that was written by like everybody because the there was a wedding. And she co-wrote that terrible Angel episode, She, with David Greenwald. Oh, wow. Um, But her last individual episodes of Buffy are all the way back to the beginning of the season. Uh, Wild at Heart, where Oz leaves, and Living Conditions, where, um, you know, Kathy... The share. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, share. That's the thing you remember. <laughs> um, and our director is David Solomon, who, this is only his fourth episode of Buffy, but he ends up doing 19 of them. He's, he's real big. He even directs the season five uh, season premiere. He becomes the first... Like not Joss. Um, Joss Whedon guy since the pilot to direct. Has Joss thing. done pilots and finales of every season so far? I he guess they're not didn't... called pilots aside from the first episode. <clears throat> the pilot he wrote but didn't direct. You remember it was directed by that guy from uh, American Graffiti. <laughs> the very first episode? Yeah. He did the very first episode? That's crazy. What? Who? The American Graffiti kid did the very first episode of Buffy? I told you that. Yeah, but I didn't know it was the very first one. I, I yeah, remember that's, that. That's the first. That. Yeah, he directed the pilot. That's the only episode of Buffy he directed. And then Whedon did the season one finale, season two premiere and finale, season three premiere and finale, season four premiere and finale. And then, uh, yeah, the, in season five, David Solomon directs the premiere. And I believe it's written by Marty Knoxon. Okay, that's very interesting. It's this team. It's the Goodbye Iowa team. Wow, they're back. <laughs> yeah. They said, hello, uh, season five. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, Iowa. Hello, season five. Uh, so Solomon, before this, had directed What's My Line, part one, and The Prom, but he also directed Beer Bad, and uh, I think he equips himself a little better here. Yeah. Um. All right. Prom uh, is good. Of course, school protector award. But he he didn't do that. I guess that was more that was the writer that did that. Well, yeah, but he directed some wonderful moments in that episode. I don't really remember. That's all I remember mostly. I feel like that was like it, an okay episode, but then that it part had made the Hellhounds. The Hellhounds. Yeah, that was pretty decent. That was that was pretty good. Remember that shot of like the origin of him doing the Hellhounds, and it was just like a girl him going like, "Do you want to go to prom with me?" And the girl going like, "No." It was like a quick flashback. No, I don't think I remember that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Maybe I do. Um, okay, let's hear your notes on Goodbye, Iowa. Scrote them immediately. Oh, immediately. Okay, so Buffy, she's like, guys. Oh, I don't want. I don't want to rush to it. Immediately uh, doesn't mean fast. Oh, no, I guess it right just now. means starting right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and now we waited too long. So now what do we do? Because I didn't. Do we wait till? Do we do try it again tomorrow? What? Never oh, because you didn't do them immediately? No, no. And take two and go. All right. So Buffy, she tells everybody about how Walsh tried to kill her, right? And something Tim brought up last week, actually. He was like, "Does so does Buffy think that Riley was in on that? Does he think that Riley is bad, possibly? Because she doesn't know, really. And Spike brings up, I think, I think she thinks no, that Riley had nothing to do with it. But Spike sort of puts it in her mind, right? He's like, you like uh what was like a parker you liked parker and you like angel, angel and now you like this guy and they're all evil so your taste sucks and she's like no he's a nice guy and then but they are questioning what is it that that walsh 
was was making like right maybe riley doesn't know about that part right and cut that to, part what's that from it's just a hip-hop thing oh who 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 does that everyone does it everyone does that i never heard that yeah they say that, that part. part yeah that part, <laughs> i never heard that uh but then cut to adam and he's like stepping out of a building like i'm here i'm leaving um that was kind of cool yeah just uh taken off like he's a frankenstein's monster yeah it's a little bit like that and uh and then they're like so what do we do where are we gonna go now because they know where we are and the the whole initiative they're after us probably and so they're like i have a great plan we're gonna go to xander's basement and giles is above it he's he yeah does not i like love this him. idea <laughs> yeah he's very funny and i have a question willow mentioned something called mirror ball what's that are we going to learn about that? I don't know what you're talking about. J- they mentioned going to Xander's basement, and Willow's, like, excited for something called Mirror Ball. She- Dude, she's just saying that he has, like, a a mirror ball. We see it in the episode. Like, a, a disco ball. A mirror ball? A disco ball. Oh. Oh, that's... I thought Mirror Ball was, like, a na- the name of a game that they came up with. Like, no. we're going to play Mirror Ball. <laughs> no. y- you don't know? Okay. Okay, well, I was excited to learn all about the rules of mirror ball, kind of, but that's not a thing. That's just a <laughs> disco ball. But yeah. anyway, so so uh, Riley comes in, right? They're the they're talking about Riley, and he comes in, and I love Spike. Spike in this scene, he does the whole thing again. I think they were like that part where you said Xander in that episode was so funny. You got to do it. Yeah, again. just do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and so he does it again. He's like, I'm Xander's friend, and uh, and then he drops it, and he's like, Oh, fine, but I can't even hurt people, so just let me go. I'm not I'm not gonna hurt anybody. And Riley has bigger things on his mind, bigger than Spike. He has to go investigate Walsh. Although he, he is put off that Spike is there. He is. He doesn't like it, but he Hostile but he has, seventeen. Hostile 17. And but he has to go figure out what's going on with Walsh because Walsh tried to kill Buffy. And they don't yet know that Walsh is dead. Another right. cool part of this episode is they don't know yet. Uh, yeah, that, that's... It's, I, I like the that part of this episode, that part at where it's like <laughs> um like slowly people learn. Yes. Like Riley learns it pretty quickly, and then like you see like the rest of the initiative, and then like finally he tells Buffy. Like it's well, Graham. It's, finds out and he comes in and tells yeah tells oh Riley. yeah 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 and i was too busy cracking up because i'm obsessed with that balls poster that was in the scene i didn't notice it <laughs> yes it was the first thing i noticed I was oh, did you notice the writing at the bottom there was like yep. only two of that. <laughs> i didn't even notice it in the scene uh, yeah. i was too just i was too focused on forest probably it was just like fucking forest uh but anyway so we go you know what bothers me about forest he has a slight speech impediment I don't think I've noticed that. Yeah, pay attention. He's got a sibilant S. I think I just noticed like how how gross he is. <laughs> like, oh, he's just always <laughs> yeah, talking con- about fucking constantly. Buffy. Like, yeah, his first scene was like, "So you getting that puss?" <laughs> like, yeah, right? it's like leave me alone. every line. I hate it. <laughs> it's a lot going on right now. And but all right, so we go to Adam. We see a little bit about about Adam, and. Something if you've ever known about Frankenstein, I don't know if you do or not, but there's a the, the story of Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster is he meets a little girl, right? Right. A little girl with the little flower. She has a flower. But in this case, it's a little boy and he's out. He's playing with like his little trucks. He's like, boom, boom, with his little trucks out in the, in the street. Yeah. And Adam comes over and he's like, hello little boy well, i don't think i think he asks him i think he's like well what am i am i a monster what are you are you a little boy and then the little boy says <laughs> what's that little thing in your arm pointing at the little stick yeah that comes out and then we cut away and you're like oh no is he gonna kill that kid and yeah he straight up did he killed him but uh we go to dr angleman he's the first one to find walsh yeah great to see dr angleman again so and he's soon. dead at the end of this, isn't he? Yeah, he's done already. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Engelman. What's his first name? Uh, we never find out. It's just Doctor Engelman. I sort of thought when they said Doctor Engelman, I thought he that might be like a trick. It might be like he might be Doctor Angel, man. He might be like related to Angel in a way. Oh, really? They're trying because to play a I, trick on us. I was like, how is this guy a scientist? He's such a cute Engelman. I don't get it. Like acute angles, bro. 
Oh, acute. That's pretty good. Thank wow, you. Wow, I'm very stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah. You, you didn't think anything about Angel, though? I feel like I'm overthinking every aspect of this show, no? No, I mean, maybe I did at that time. Like, I was, you got to remember, like, in 2000, I was overthinking everything. I was obsessed with the show. Right. But, like, I've seen it so many times now, and I know, like, Dr. Angleman's pretty unimportant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <the> grand scheme <laughs> He's just things. sort of there to talk to them once Walsh dies. Right, yeah. And so he he finds Walsh. He's not yet dead. Go back to Xander's basement. Everybody's sleeping in the basement. Giles wakes up and he's like, "Hey guys, you guys got to turn." I, by the way, I thought I thought this was very weird. Like, um, especially when, when I was thinking about the fact that he he met these girls when they were little, when they were kids, when they were like <laughs> sixteen years old, and now yeah. they're like all just like sleeping in a bed beside him. And I, I thought it was a little weird. But I got over it, I guess, pretty quickly. But they're watching The Road Runner. You like that cartoon? Sure. Yeah, th- I feel like around this time in TV history and in movie history, frankly, like anytime you show any characters watching television, it's a vintage cartoon because it's sort of like a modern thing that might be on TV that they can show for because it's in the the uh, public domain. or Or... A little, a little bit. I mean, it's not a cartoon, but like in New Mutants, watching Buffy, I think that seems pretty realistic. Yeah, I think at some point in um, in the uh, in season three, you see Faith watching old cartoons on her black and white TV too. Really? You don't yeah. know? You don't know which ones? I don't remember. It's probably some Looney Tunes shit. Yeah, she had like a whole setup with her TV. It was a black and white TV. She never got color. I don't believe so. That's crazy. Why? Why wouldn't that motel have color TVs? It just that was just to show how ratty it was. I didn't yeah, it's have a color. dirt motel, man. I don't. I don't even think that's that's like a thing, is it? Like it, it was the, when I was a kid, man. Really? Like the yeah cheap motels don't even have color. Okay. Yeah, like they used to advertise that you'd go to a hotel and. You know, on the marquee, it would say color TV. <laughs> wow, like how they, today they're like uh, indoor pool. It'd be like color yeah, TV. Yeah, or like free Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> Pets allowed. Right. Color TV. Um, so Anya, Anya keeps uh, keeps uh, making remarks about because because Buffy's still a little torn up about about Riley. You know, you know he's a bad guy now. Uh, well, she's unsure. She's still unsure about it. She's, but um. Well, I guess she she knows he's good, but she's just like annoyed by the whole. She keeps getting dragged into this stuff, and but Anya says Xander, Xander's a good, boring boyfriend. Like he's never he's never getting into antics or anything. He's just a chill bro. But she keeps reminding Buffy that he's off limits. Yeah, and I thought that seemed kind of weird to me. Like I don't know no, if we're I... going back to this storyline. Of... No, no, no. I I just think it was Anya like caught herself telling Buffy what a great boyfriend Sander is, and mm-hmm. then realized like, oh, maybe I don't want to be advertising this. <laughs> but they do it like a like four times in the episode. Three or yeah, four times. it's it's a recurring bit. I mean, what else are you gonna do with Anya at this point? Yeah, I guess so. I actually, this was kind of one of the one of the first episodes where Anya didn't completely work for me. Like early on in the episode, she had a line where she was like, "They Buffy didn't even die, but they still are upset." Like it was like, "Why? Why did right. they give? Why did they have to give her a line there?" I I don't know. I don't know. It didn't completely work for me, but regardless, so we go to oh, they're still they're still in the basement. They see the news right of the little boy that's dead. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, Joe Xander is coming down from upstairs. Like, turn on the news. I don't know. Maybe his mom was watching it. Yeah, I think I think so. And and so Buffy thinks that the initiative let out that uh, is it Polgara Polgara demon? demon. Yeah, to kill her to like go hunt her down and kill her because she survived the last encounter. And uh, but no, right. Obviously... So she blames herself. Like she assumes yes. the Polgara demon is on the loose to kill her. And like on the way, like killed a little boy. Another part that didn't completely work for me. That big dramatic scene she has, and then she's like, "Oh, I'm wearing my pajamas, my sushi pajamas." Oh, I like that moment. I, don't know. I like that moment specifically because she says maybe that that monologue would have sounded more serious if I wasn't wearing my yummy sushi pajamas. I like that she includes the word yummy. I guess so. I guess so. It's cute. Um, 
I don't know. That's that if like if we were gonna like rank moments like this moment, I feel like this would be very but far but down on the list of. I don't know. To be like honest, this. like maybe this moment for me is like you're here, vampires. Really? Yeah, I always found my yummy sushi pajamas <laughs> pretty cute. <laughs> I like that moment. It is cute. It is anything she does. It's cute. But I don't know. But all right. So Forrest, he's like. Hey, bro, I see you're getting home in the morning time. I know what that means. It means you were out on Let night. me sniff that dick. Yeah. And then and then Riley's like, God, fucking, I'm trying to look at my balls poster. And then Graham comes in and he's like, guys, Walsh died. And they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> so they go to the place and Forrest is real mean. He's like, I think that looks like she got staked. I think Buffy did that. And Riley's like, no. That was a Kolgara demon. If I know one thing, I know what a Kolgara demon looks like. And so it, Riley goes off to go yeah, find and it. And, and Angleman comes in and he's immediately like, yeah, it was like 99% the Kolgara demon. And and Forrest isn't like, sorry, I accused your girlfriend of murdering my our mother figure. But uh, yeah, he, seemed, he's, he seemed like really insistent. He seemed kind of like he was like Buffy deserved it also. He's like, what, what's up with Forrest? He's like a mean guy. Is he just jealous that he like that she, like she's becoming his n- number one best friend? Um, there's probably something to that. I I do think like Forrest is very much about like the mission and very devoted to like Maggie Walsh's vision of the world, and so yeah, he hasn't changed his view. Only Riley yeah, has. he he doesn't like that Riley is getting sort of pulled in any different directions. Graham seems chill though. Graham is super fucking chill. I'm really appreciating Graham on this rewatch. Wow. He's just like he's right nothing. Guy. He no, he is nothing. He's there's no character to him whatsoever. But like there's like the I, I think I'm more annoyed by Forrest than I ever have been before. Good. And I'm so glad I'm, it's not just I'm me. Appreciative just of Forrest. Graham. That's good. I, f- I feel basically the same way. Yeah. And I think the actor is good. The Graham actor is pretty good. He's good at playing nothing, basically. Which yeah. isn't like a diss at him. I think he's actually pretty good. But no, he's still working today. That guy, I saw him in somebody had a beard, and I was like, "Wow, look at you!" That's awesome. <laughs> um, has Boreanaz ever had a beard? I feel like I've always just seen him clean. No, nah, man, he 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 went. He goes beard a lot on uh, Seal Team. No way. Yeah. Like really? Like he yeah. has like a legit beard? Yeah, he can grow a beard, man. He looks great. I don't doubt it, but that's crazy. All right, so. Here we go. This was very fun. So they go off and they find a crypt. And I didn't think anything of it at first. I I, I didn't like, did you? I mean, you've seen this episode, but I didn't think it was going to be Spike that was going to be in there. Oh, but, I I remembered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I want to say, hey, I'm watching here vibes here a little bit, right? They go in here, they find a TV and it's warm. Somebody's been watching that fucking TV nonstop. <laughs> yeah, keeping it hot, bro. They couldn't turn it off. Um, I, probably, I do love that part. probably catching up on some passions, baby. <laughs> oh, you're right. He's he's been so busy lately. He's been, <laughs> that's so funny. And uh, so yeah, they see the TV and they fucked up. They destroy the TV. Not that cool. is to me. I I will never forgive Forrest for this moment. Oh, Forrest did that. Yeah, that's the yeah. Worst Forrest, thing did. Did. listen, it's a hot TV. That Maybe means clearly somebody the is enjoying some television. <laughs> Just because you up. went in there and couldn't find anybody, fuck off, man. Yeah, that really, but that really bothered me. I didn't even know that that was Forrest. Uh, but I have a, I have a question here. We see Spike, like they they open like the tomb and they see a body in there and they leave. Why hasn't Spike removed the body yet? If this is like the Spike's crypt, this is like where he wants to chill out. Why? Why is he okay just being in there with the dead body? Still, well, probably for moments like this, right? You think so? He, he th- I was yeah. thinking that. Like, did did he keep it there only for moments like this? So he, that's good... what I. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's less suspicious if there's still a body in there. Okay, I just feel like you'd be much more at peace without the dead body. But I guess it brings in peace knowing that's a good hiding spot. So. All right, great job, Spike. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, Tara. I thought it was pretty gross seeing him like get up in that in in the. But he was down yeah, with the feet. You like the yeah, he feet. yeah. But he when he started getting up, he had like the um, the corpse's legs on his shoulders, almost like he was gonna like fuck it. 
<laughs> and I, I found it really gross. <laughs> it didn't cross my mind, I guess. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Tara, she's in this episode. Yeah, she sure is. Yeah, I feel like we're getting getting a lot of Tara recently. I got like Yeah, she's been in every episode now since Hush. Is that true? I would not have thought that much. I believe I so. That's that's wild. But this is the most we've ever gotten in terms of uh intrigue, basically. We see definite intrigue. Definite intrigue. Willow shows up and they're doing the whole uh sex thing still they're like wow i haven't been able to think about anything except for the since we last done magic it's all i could think about i'm so excited to do it again and they're like i promise i don't only like magic i like talking to you too (laughs) (laughs) yeah but uh but they're like but we are here to do magic so let's get down to it (laughs) and so they they just they start doing the magic and uh crazy locator spell it's a demon locator spell yeah it's like um it's like that map in Harry Potter, right? Where you can uh, see <laughs> what's that called? The Marauders map. The, yeah, it's like the Marauders map, basically. Yeah. Trying to create here, and um, but here we go. So they they do this, but Tara doesn't want to cooperate when Willow's not looking. Tara sort of dumps it out, doesn't do the spell correctly, so it doesn't work. But Willow doesn't yet know that Tara's not doing it right. And I don't that's know right. why that's happening. What's going that, on there? Yeah, yeah. Tara sabotages the demon locator spell and uh just plays it off like I guess the spell didn't work. <laughs> and then uh yeah, and that's sort of the last we see of that in the episode. It's it's it, it's really just a setup scene. Yeah, but pretty good, pretty good setup scene. I'm interested in what's going on there. So that's pretty what good. What do you think is going on there? Well, obviously, she's not a good guy, I assume, like a fully good guy. She's not being honest with Willow. Doesn't mm-hmm. want her to to succeed. Maybe she just wants her to not become powerful and leave her. She's trying to keep she was she's like made a friend once mm-hmm. that did magic. And then that, that girl surpassed her in magic yeah. ability and left her. So she's just trying to. There is an air. There is an air of desperation about Tara. I understand why your brain would go there. Yeah, and like, yeah, I can. I feel like she's, yeah, gotten jealous before and doesn't want that to happen again. Maybe, but all right, all right. So we go to Willie the Snitch is back for the first time in a long time. The yeah, whole season, can I, I would think. Can I say, unfortunately, final appearance? No way. Yeah. Not even an angel doesn't go over to angel. Nah, the actor got busy. There's like good, other though. characters like um, Willie the Smith, this the Smith, <laughs> going forward on Buffy, but this is this is the last official Willie the Snitch. Well, was we, it they Doyle? Me- like they Willie mention the him a bunch. They mention him a bunch. Those no, no, Doyle was Whistler. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, but yeah, Willie the Snitch. Like going forward on Buffy, they'll occasionally say like, "I went over and talked to Willie" or something. But yeah, this is the last time we ever. That's seen. cool. Yeah, that's a bummer though. I would honestly, who who was it recently that that came back in, or that popped Ethan up? Rain. Ethan, yeah, that's crazy. I thought both. Yeah, these we're people... saying goodbye to some of uh, some old favorites, but they don't even know, do they? No, they don't even know in that moment. But the, but they do sort of they do a good send off in like in that uh like when he's here he's he talks about how the, his bar has been popping like everybody's been going it's busy that makes me feel good that, that yeah uh, he left too. on like yeah such a positive goes... note. She walks in, they're pumping uh, Romeo Had Juliet by Lou Reed. I was pretty pumped by that. <laughs> that was a cool song. And uh, maybe end the episode with that. Okay. And um and then uh I and they have a nice little rapport. He he requests a punch from her, you know. It's it's, it's really sweet at this point. They have he says a, like, the, an the demons like chicken tenders, <laughs> which is pretty funny. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I uh, felt bad for that lady that Riley was threatening. That like old demon lady. Really? Yeah. Why was Riley so mean? Well, he's going through withdrawal. Oh yeah, I guess that's what it is. But yeah. he, but he was like, "You're in here like tr- mingling, making friends." And he was like, "Like chill out." But yeah, I guess you're right. He's he's not <laughs> not doing so well right now. Um. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, Riley comes in right, and he has like. 
she Buffy takes him home because he's like scratching his hand raw, basically. No. And so she, she takes there, him, bro. Yeah, that look that looked pretty pretty scary. Um so yeah, so they bring Riley to Xander's basement, which I thought was pretty funny. And uh and so she comes up with a plan. Her and Xander, they're still using this, by the way. Xander's military background. Yeah. Like two episodes ago, not two episodes ago, but two military episodes ago, they were like, Xander, it's not working much anymore. But they've used it twice since then. So all right. Yeah. Whatever. I feel like eventually Someone like asks Xander about it, and Xander's like, "It's gone now. Like we, this is not a thing <laughs> anymore." <faking> it. <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, like not right now. But I think like it's slowly fading. So he probably has less than he did, and eventually he doesn't have any of it. Okay, I don't even know what he really does. Like they basically just need a body for him to like wear the initiative outfit. Basically, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like he doesn't really do anything. But anyway, uh, Anya has a moment. She's like, don't take Xander. <laughs> and uh, but so Buffy and Xander go off and he thinks uh, retinal is rectal. That was a pretty yep, good joke. Yep. Uh, he tells Buffy he's that, that. I think that's why I thought like they might be leading somewhere because he's like, Buffy, pretend like you're kissing me. And I, was like, I like love that thing moment. Again? Like, no, no, I yeah, I, I like that moment, though, where like he sees that as like camouflage like we'll just be making out and but that was like, weird he has like he yeah on, but you know soldiers and scientists don't just like randomly make out in stairwells <laughs> in the initiative <laughs> yeah you're right like that that is a Xander thing to do but he has a girlfriend I thought that was crazy I didn't like that but it is funny I guess uh but so here so here we go this made me sad right well first of all Riley wakes up and he's all like, ah, I got to get out of here. Will- Willow ah. he pushes her out of the way and then he leaves. And Spike, this was sad. Spike goes to Willie's bar and he's like, hey, hey, guys, I got to like get some info or whatever. And then a guy fucking shows up and beats him up because he because he's like, hey, I hear that you beat up demons. So now we're going to beat you up because you like help Buffy. Yeah, Spike's becoming a little bit of a pariah in the demon yeah, community. I never even thought about that. Like, like Spike's people that would would like Spike don't now because he's like a traitor, kind of. Not, mm. not, but uh, he wouldn't if he could fight normal people. But he can only fight demons. It's not his fault. It made me so sad. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so there's Spike. And when he has like a bloody nose, oh, oh. Willie anyway. and the bloody nose. Oh wow, wow! I forgot all about that. That's crazy. <laughs> His name's William. Well, yeah, William the Bloody. Yeah. The all right. So so uh so Adam basically. Oh, but so but so Buffy and Riley they go to I guess Buffy Riley caught up with Buffy and they go to Engelman right and they're like what's what's three fourteen what is that and then Adam shows up and he's like it's me and then and then it cuts <laughs> to a commercial I think and then it comes back and he's like. He yeah, goes has like this fucking long speech where he's like, yeah, it was actually kind of interesting. He he says, like, I've been thinking about the world or something. Yeah, yeah, I kind kind of liked it. He's like, no, I like it too. It's a pretty dope ma- monologue. Like, I I like when you know I'm a fan of a monologuing villain. I've been reading a lot of early like Stan Lee Marvel, and every villain has like a scene like this. And you know, if it if it don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, he's like, I know that I'm like a monster taken from a bunch of pieces, and Logan didn't know that. He thought I was something, but it, I mean, he goes into this thing. And he's like, I really I like your Adam impression, by the way. It's oh, yeah. really good. Who who is the actor? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. His name's George Hertzberg. He never really went on too much, unfortunately. Oh, I like him. Um, yeah, me too. I've tried. To, I've tried looking at him, by the way. Like, what pieces might be from previous? demons i've seen and i can't really put it together like i don't really know what he is am i supposed to no i think it's just like he's frankenstein but with a little skewer <laughs> yeah and he but, he but he says like i know i know what i am but not who i am and he's like trying to try to figure out sort of who he is but he, he talks about riley how he they're brothers basically because they have the same mom Mm-hmm. Walsh was like their their mom, so he thinks that Riley's his brother, and uh, but Riley's like, no, I'll never be your brother, and and then and then Adam fucking stabs Engelman. Yeah, goodbye Engelman. Goodbye Engelman. It should be the title, and uh, 
and then so uh is that is that the end basically i think i think next scene is buffy talking to willow and she's talking like I, me and riley we're... what is the last moment of this episode the last moment is riley in the hospital oh right yeah yeah okay yeah, but right here, Buffy is talking to Willow. She's like, "Yeah, I haven't talked to Riley uh, since like we last talked," <laughs> and, uh, and but but I gotta focus on Adam. Like Adam is like a scary monster, and I gotta take down Adam. And then yeah, we go to Riley in the hospital, and he's like all all naked in the hospital, <laughs> and he looks down and he's looking. He's just thinking about that. Or earlier in the episode, when Buffy saw that he'd scratched his hand a whole bunch, she gave him like her little head band thing that yeah. was on her head and wrapped it around his hand. And he's like looking at that, I guess thinking about Buffy. Sure. In a positive way. I, well, I in some way we don't know, but I have a question. Um, yeah. Riley is in a hospital. What if he gets up going to look for a little drink, stumbles upon another hospital bed <laughs> with faith on it. And he's like, Oh, faith. Uh, I favorite. would assume it, that Riley's in a military hospital. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Why, though? Because the last we see of Riley before he's in the hospital, is he's in the initiative, right? But he's not... Oh, really? Like, do they, do, like, Forrest and the guys take him off? I don't think... I don't We. I don't think we see that, but I, I think he's in I, that facility. Because I, I, I thought he was probably... Just done with them, like like Walsh is in there. Engelman's dead. Oh. I would have thought he just went to a regular hospital. Maybe you're right. I guess we'll see going forward. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I saw him in that hospital, and all I could think about was Faith. Hoping Faith, he's he's in the same room yeah. with Faith. Remember when Buffy and Faith were in like the same hospital room? There, there was just like, like one yeah. thing separating them. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like that. That'd be cool. But that was that cool was because cool. It, they did it for that camera shot, right? Like we see we're like on Buffy, and then we go over to Faith. <laughs> that was yeah. that was actually awesome. That was a Joss Whedon pan across. Classic Joss Whedon pan across. Oh yeah. Um that was sick. yeah. But all right, I thought I thought it was an okay episode. It, can I ask you something that you kind of went yeah. over? I've always been a little bit confused by what exactly Riley's withdrawing on. Like I understand yes. that the initiative is providing him drugs of some well, sort. Well, they say yeah, right, but they say that they've been putting stuff in their food. Yeah, but then what the hell was that scene one episode earlier in the Iron Team when they With show the Buffy and Riley? Yeah, they show Riley yeah. taking pills. I always thought that was set up for something. But then in this episode, they say specifically that there's drugs in their food. So what the fuck are those pills? Yeah, it's it's a good question. Honestly, I didn't think anything about the pills until I think you brought it up. I I think I thought the pills were just showing like now she is with like a normal guy who takes his vitamins. And oh, stuff. maybe that is what it was intended to be. And but then, then when you brought that up, I thought you brought it up for later. Reason. I thought you knew something, so I was just going along with what you said. But now you're confused. So yeah, so maybe the no, I I anything. I brought it up because to me. I always thought that like this was a mess up, but maybe you're right. Maybe that was the intention of the pills in that episode. And it just seems weird to me that we're talking about different drugs one episode later. Yeah, it is weird because they do. They do say specifically like they've been crushing up medicine and putting it in their food. Yeah, that. Yeah. So but but in that episode, in the previous episode, do they do they say that he's been taking stuff assigned to him by the initiative? Is that part of it? Like those are like um, initiative assigned. Pills. I'm not sure. Maybe I always just assumed that. Yeah, maybe it is a mess up. I'm not really sure. But yeah. All right. Well, I, I'll give it a three. Yeah, that's what I give it to. I always see this and the I and team as like hand in hand. Like it's basically like, I like part one more. and part two of the same story. I is like no that I one. team. That's what no, I. Oh, I know. No, no, I messed you, up. That's what you kept thinking it was. Yeah, I wrote that in my thing right here. Yeah, I, I have them way. I have the Iron Team number twelve in my ranking, and I have this. Wow, how would you have the Iron? <laughs> that is so crazy. Uh, me and Tim really liked that episode. You gave it a three. We both gave it fours. We we were really high on it. Uh, but this one, I have it forty-seven. So thirty-five wow. spots lower. Jesus. All right. Where do I have the Iron Team? You have the Iron Team. Let me see. I might have put no iron team, so I, I will have to find it. 
Oh, I did put no on team. Oh my god. You have it at 46. Yeah, so and I like that one more. So read me down from that one for my ranking. Okay, so down from 46, you have Welcome to the Hellmouth, the very or is that the first episode? Yeah. The Harvest, Enemies, Dead Man's Party, The Dark Age, Teacher's Pet, Witch, Pangs, Gingerbread, Nightmares. Uh, you could put this ahead of Pangs. Ahead of Pangs, between Witch and Pangs? Yeah. So you have it 54. And I have it 47. Oh, so I actually have it below you. You just have the I and team so fucking high. Oh, I have that. You have both of them below me. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I like these more than you. I don't know. Um, uh, but, but I think you like a like a stretch of like season three more than me. Like the yeah the, the one with uh John Hawks. Like that. Like those episodes. Like there's like a stretch. Uh, lie to you... me. Lie to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So that's the oh MVP. Oh, My MVP? MVP. Yeah. I'm gonna go. It's between Buffy and Spike in this episode. And I think I might go Spike. I don't know if Buffy did anything really that stood out to me. She didn't have like any. Oh, maybe that you like that Yummy one. Yummy sushi. Moment. You like the you love that. <laughs> I didn't like it that much. But Spike made me really sad. So let me go Spike. Oh. Um. I'm gonna go with uh with Xander. Xander, I like that pick. Yeah, I thought he was real funny in this episode. It is a funny Xander episode. I, I, that's a good. That's a good choice. Um, All right, and who's your LVP? Well, I think I'm gonna go. I hate to do it, but I'm gonna go Anya this episode. Oh, because I don't want to go Tara. Because oh no, Forest. It's obviously yeah. Forrest. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I'm gonna go Forest. I, I didn't even write Forest. Then I wrote Anya and Tara. Yeah, for I was obviously Forest. I'm sorry. Sorry, Anya. <laughs> <laughs> What's Forest's name? The actor. Oh fuck! Um, Graham's gone on to more than Forrest has. No, they actually. I, I see them both and stuff. Uh, Forrest is Leonard Roberts. That's a cool name. Is it Leonard? <laughs> I like the name Leonard. I don't know. Okay, he's in um, American Sniper. That's a pretty big movie. Oh hey, he's apparently a regular in in that new Goosebumps TV show. What? Yeah, so check that out. By the way, um, Scream King Justin Long is in that show. You know I that? another I horror do know that. Thing. I literally I came home from work the other night. My girlfriend's sleeping. I guess she fell asleep on Goosebumps. It's on the TV, and all I see is Justin Long, and I'm like, of course. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was playing R.L. Stein, but it's not. It's like a different character. No, he's like just in one episode of the anthology part. I think. Oh, really? I thought he, sure. I, I, I saw the trailer and then I saw like the poster and I thought he was like a big part of the poster. Oh, so maybe he is. I just I, I have just no idea it on the one episode I saw. You know more than me. You've seen it on the, the your TV. I have, yeah. I have, I don't know anything about it. Um, what about Blucus? Is Blue has Blucus done a lot? No, I uh, actually oh. of the Initiative Boys, he's done the least. But see, Mark Blucus, um, married an executive in Hollywood. Like an enormous. I can't get him roles though. He I'm just saying, roles. like he's got money. Yeah, he's fine. But he doesn't love acting. That's not like a thing he wants to do. Maybe he does, but he's not that great at it. Oh, I thought I think he's very good. Maybe he's yeah. just good at being like charming college boy. And that's all he could really do. Apparently, he's into basketball. Listen to this. I just what? looked up him up on IMDb. He coaches a. Uh, High school, a girls' high school basketball team, and he played shooting guard and small forward for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons from 1990 to 94, starting alongside Tim Duncan. What the hell? This is yeah. the craziest thing I've ever heard. He had a Mark career Lucas total of 300, yeah, Tim Duncan. 89 games, uh, 387 points. 187 rebounds and 114 assists. Wow, it's very impressive. He was really Lucas. good. Yeah, that's incredible. They don't give him a basketball episode to really like really show his skills. No, that but sucks. you do see him shooting hoops in that with the little Koosh basketball. 
Yes. Oh, you're right. I think he sunk all the baskets. Like, yeah. I, I, rem I remember him standing far away and they do like, the, it's like a long take and he fucking sinks it. I was like, damn, Lucas, <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Tim Duncan, that's <laughs> awesome. He, that's I so know. cool. Isn't that wild? That is wild. You said demon. That's crazy too. The Wake Forest demon knights or whatever you said. Deem what was it? Yeah, I don't know. You remember. said demon something. Very buffy. It's a bit buffy centric. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it, the demon deacons. Demon deacons. That's crazy. Yeah. The show oh, the demon go. deacon later in the series. What's a demon? Um, it's like a Christian thing, isn't it? I have no idea. Yeah, b remember B Batista when they first introduced Batista WWE they called him Deacon Batista. Deacon Batista. Yeah, because he was like Devon Dudley's henchman and at the time he was like Reverend Devon. I don't remember this about Batista. Yeah. Yeah. Early Batista. <laughs> I would say early Triple H is cooler than early Batista. The cool what? like English character. Yo, I love that character. Yeah. Hunter, Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Helmsley. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to Angela, huh? 